In this video, we're going to go through a complete step-by-step -step guide on how to get your real estate license in the state of Georgia. We're also going to give you some tips and tricks on how to pick your very first real estate brokerage. And at the end, we're going to go through a complete guide on how much it costs to get your real estate license in the state of Georgia. So let's dive right into the video. My name is Chris with the Empire Real Estate YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about real estate, personal finance, and entrepreneurship. Before we dive into the video, I want to give you my free how to get your real estate license and start your real estate career guide. If you want a copy, click the description down below and get your guide. Let's dive right into the steps to getting your license. The very first step to getting your license in the state of Georgia is meeting some basic requirements. The very first requirement is that you're 18 years old or older and you have a high school diploma or a GED. The very first step to getting your real estate license is completing the pre-licensed education requirements. In the state of Georgia, you're required to complete 75 hours of pre-licensed education classes. Now, these classes have to be state approved and I know this sounds like a lot, if you have a busy schedule or you're at a nine to five job that doesn't give you that much flexibility, you might be asking yourself how you're going to get in 75 hours of classroom time. The good news is, is that many great real estate schools are offering classroom time online now, and you can actually, in most cases, get your real estate license from the comfort of your own home. We highly suggest you check out Real Estate Express. They do a really good job. They offer comprehensive classes and they oftentimes have some really good sales going on. So if you want to check them out, there's an affiliate link down in the description below where you can check out their pricing and see if it's going to be a good fit for you. After completing your pre-licensed education requirements, it's time to schedule your exam. In the state of Georgia, the exams are actually administered by a third-party testing company called PSI Exam. You can go on their website and get it scheduled. The very first thing to know is when you go to the testing center on test day, you're going to want to bring a couple things. The first thing is two forms of identification and a basic non-scientific calculator for the math portion of the exam. Now this exam is a closed book test. You cannot bring any books, any notes, nothing into the testing center. But the good news is, is that it's a multiple choice test. So. I'm going to give you a couple quick tips on how to pass the exam and a couple things that I did when I was going through this process to increase my odds of passing. The very first thing is to use process of elimination. So if you come across a question that you don't know the answer to, you might want to cross out the answers that are completely wrong and then just leave the ones that you're questioning if they're the right answer or the wrong answer. Doing this will increase your odds of answering the question right. The next thing to do is to reread the questions a couple times before you actually submit your answer. I don't know how many times in this process I was going through the exam and I caught myself, you know, rereading the question and then saying, oh, they're asking it this way. I thought it meant something else. And if I had just answered based on impulse, I would have gotten that question wrong. So that will save you a lot of trouble alone. The next thing to do is to take your time. You have a couple hours to complete this exam and you will probably finish the exam early like most people that take it. So rushing through the exam is probably the worst thing that you can do. Last but not least, if you do have to take the exam again, it's not the end of the world. So many of the top agents that I know in my market and throughout the country are agents that failed the exam the very first time that they took it. So failing the exam doesn't mean that you're bad at real estate. It just means you have to study a little bit more and give it a second try. Next, you're going to have to get your background check and your fingerprints done. So they're going to want to check a couple things. They want to look at your record and make sure they ha you have nothing on your record that's going to prevent you from getting licensed. After that, you're going to do some celebrating because you passed your exam, you got through the entire process, and now it's time to submit your application for your license and pick your sponsoring broker. Finding a sponsoring broker can be one of the most important parts of this process. Because if you didn't know, 87% of all agents that get licensed fail out of the business. So finding a good broker that's gonna provide you with support is a huge deal and will actually increase your odds of succeeding in this challenging industry. So I wanna give you a couple quick tips that I wish I knew when I first got started. The very first tip is to ask questions when you meet up with the broker. The very first question to ask is, are you going to provide a mentor that I have access to throughout the week and when I'm doing my first deals? 
What I would do is I would find out how many deals you have access to a one-on-one -on -one mentor for. I would suggest getting a mentor for the first three to five deals. And this is someone that you can call, someone that you can talk to, and somebody that you can ask complex questions to that may have been in the business for five, 10, 20 years. Someone that has experience and someone that actually knows what they're doing and has dealt with a wide variety of situations because every real estate deal is different and you're going to run into a lot of complex problems and having somebody in your corner with experience makes all the difference. The second thing to ask is if they have a training program in place. Having access to a mentor that you can pick up the phone and call is a big deal, but that mentor is probably selling real estate on their own. They probably have a busy schedule and sitting down with you every day to help you through small tasks and tr train you different things is probably not going to be realistic. So having a training program in place, even if that's training modules online, just for you to go through and get, you know, all your questions answered, all the basics done will be a huge game changer to move you along and accelerate your path to becoming a successful full-time agent. The next question to ask is how does the broker expect you to generate business? Now, this is a super important question, and most brokers are going to say sphere of influence marketing. And that's not the wrong answer because I personally know many agents that have built six-figure businesses just by using sphere of influence marketing. But that's not for everybody. When I first got started, if I depended on sphere of influence marketing alone, I probably wouldn't be here talking about real estate or doing real estate full-time today. So I would suggest figuring out what the marketing plan is and what they can teach you on how to get business and get your business off the ground. So when I started, I actually started by doing prospecting, marketing, all those things because I was only 22 years old and my sphere of influence, they weren't really buying houses or transacting. So if I required on that method alone, I would probably be in really bad shape. Last but not least, you want to talk about commission splits. Let's talk about the money. And I did this when I started. I went for the brokerage with the highest commission split and luckily it worked out. But for a lot of agents, that's a big mistake because if you go with a brokerage just for the commission split and they don't offer you any training, any support, you're going to be lost. And keep in mind, this is a 100% commission business. So if you never sell anything, you're going to get 100% of nothing. So I would highly suggest going for a lower commission split that has a lot of value, whether it's training, whether it's leads, whether it's marketing, you want those things. And then once you're established, you might want to go look for different commission splits down the line, but getting your real estate career off the ground and having all that support is a big deal. Next, I want to talk to you about some of the costs associated with getting your real estate license. That way you can budget for it. The very first thing that I would budget for is your real estate pre-license classes, and I would budget between three and $500 for those. Now, sometimes you can get sales and sometimes you'll get better deals, but I would just use that general budget for your real, real estate pre-license education. Next, I would budget for fingerprinting. This fee is gonna be roughly $49. Next, you're gonna have your exam fee, which is about $121 in the state of Georgia. Once you pass, you're gonna have your license application fee, which is about $100. And I would budget three to $500 to get started with your first brokerage and get e and insurance. So all in all, you can get into a career that has tremendous upside for usually a couple thousand dollars. So it's really not that expensive to get started as a real estate agent. And that's the good news. You just have to put the work in up front, go through the classes, pass the exam, and open the door to a career that you might really love. So if you have any questions about getting your real estate license, drop it in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Also, if you are gonna get your real estate license this year, drop that in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. Thanks so much for tuning in and have an awesome day.